traffic fumes, industrial gases, garden bonfires. Man-made pollutants and damp air formed a blanket of smog over the region this morning. Birmingham City Council's air monitoring station has recorded a rise in concentrations of harmful gases, and it's a similar story in Coventry. The very young, very old and asthmatics are most at risk. We've got quite a lot of transport travelling on this road, private cars and so on, they're generating atmospheric pollution, and in these very still anticyclonic conditions, that pollution doesn't get dispersed as rapidly as we would like. The lack of wind, coupled with the action of sunlight on certain gases, has caused the build-up of smog. There's no doubt where the blame lies. One of the big challenges that atmospheric pollution now faces is the private motor vehicle. And there's no doubt that we are, all of us, part of the problem. And therefore, the more we can encourage people to use public transport and to, and to be frugal in the way they use their domestic motor cars, then the better things will be. At first glance, it's just another metro. But this car represents the future of commuter travel. It's been converted to electric power, cutting roadside pollution. Two British telecom engineers spent a couple of years installing a standard milk float motor and rechargeable batteries. It's got a range of about 25 miles and a top speed of 65 miles an hour. How much money have you spent on it? Approximately £3,000. Do you think it's going to be a good substitute for the petrol-driven version? I think eventually it will have to come, yes, with pollution the way it is, yes. The electricity probably comes from coal-fired power stations, so pollution is only shifted from roadside to countryside. But there is one bonus for electric car owners. They don't have to pay road tax.